I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to the to Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked, They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading is from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something you cannot obtain, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive, because you ask wrongly, in order to spend what you get on pleasures. 
Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and the disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all, and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our response is from the letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Together, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For among you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant us, O Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. So let's begin by talking about a very special place. And that place is the elementary school playground. It's a place from which those who've had the experience of being there probably carry a lot of vivid memories. 
And I'm guessing those memories are all over the map. There may be best friends, first crushes, victories on the handball court. But there might also be bullies, teasing, and fights. The elementary school playground can be a beautiful place and also a pretty rough one. And can't the same thing be said about children in general? Children are amazing. They are bright, inquisitive, passionate, and energetic. But anyone who has spent a substantial amount of time with children knows that they can also be pretty challenging at times. They can sometimes be petty and territorial and uncompromising. So why is it that in today's gospel, along with so many others, Jesus lifts up children as a holy example of what it looks like to be fit for the kingdom of heaven. What is it about the youngest among us that sets them apart as uniquely fit for citizenship in the heavenly places? To know for certain, we would have to ask Jesus personally. But even here in this realm of creation, I have a good guess that I want to hazard. Think about what happens when you present a child with something that he doesn't understand or something that he doesn't like. The result is predictable. You get that inevitable question, but why? And usually that question doesn't come just once. If you're in the mood to try offering reasons, your first attempt usually doesn't suffice to satisfy the child. She wants to dig deeper, and so she asks again, but why? Now, sometimes you may resort to the good old-fashioned, because I said so, but that doesn't make the question go away. Children are neither easily duped nor easily satisfied. When something doesn't make sense to them, when it offends their sense of what is intuitively right, they demand an explanation. And they want one that is simple but rigorous and traces back to the basic principles of life as they understand them. Now, based on these criteria, notice what sorts of explanations likely wouldn't satisfy a child. Because that's the way we've always done it. Because that's how people in our religion, class, culture, or political party think about this issue. Because everyone knows that's right. Because no one will like you if you think differently about this. Young children aren't usually swayed by arguments such as these, the ones that are based in conformity or tradition. Such arguments can be remarkably successful in influencing the thoughts and the behaviors of adolescents and adults. But young children need something more basic. 
while not usually saying so explicitly, they insist that we start from basic principles, the sort that nearly all of the human race can agree upon, and that we make our case from there. Perhaps this is at least one of the characteristics in children that Jesus was seeking to encourage in all of us of any age. He asks us if we can, even through adolescence and adulthood, maintain the sort of curiosity and insistence that everything makes sense that we find in young children. Now this is, of course, very hard to do. So much of life seems not to make sense, no matter how hard we try to make sense of it. And so we can become jaded and give up. But Jesus exhorts us not to give up. Because if we do, we concede that we will never really get to the bottom of things, to the truth. But the truth, he tells us, is what will make us free. Now, I certainly know what it's like to drift into the jadedness and mindlessness that I'm describing here. After several years of serving first as a teacher and then as a minister in Chicago, San Antonio, and San Francisco, I was really certain of a lot of things. I knew exactly what needed to be done to address issues that so many of us care deeply about, such as homelessness, poverty, racism, food insecurity, criminal justice, and a host of others. I had stopped asking the basic question of why when I encountered these things, because I already knew why. I knew who and what was to blame, and I knew what would work to solve the problems if everyone would just get on board. But now, with the world having been turned upside down so thoroughly in recent days, I'm no longer so sure of anything. I'm realizing that I had abandoned my childlike curiosity, my insistence on asking why when things don't make sense far too soon. I know that I care about all these things, perhaps more deeply now than ever. And I know that I care about all the people affected by them. And I know that I care about you, each and every one of you. But I am no longer nearly so sure of what words are the best ones to utter and what actions are the best ones to take at a time like this. Now, at first, this might seem like pretty bad news. Confusion and uncertainty get a pretty bad rap. But I suggest that it might actually be something to be celebrated. When we recover a little bit of that childlike curiosity, a little bit of that beginner's mind that doesn't know and that doesn't understand problems and their solutions but wants to, we give God something that God can really work with. When we offer up to God hearts and minds that earnestly desire to know right and to do good, but aren't entirely sure what exactly that means, 
we give the spirit an ideal space in which she can do her holy work. She can and will enliven and guide and cheer us with incredible energy. So let us welcome the children in our lives. Let us welcome their curiosity, their energy, their insistence on knowing why things are the way they are from the ground up, and their unwillingness to accept that which doesn't make sense. And let's not just welcome the children on the outside but also the one within. No matter how long we've been alive, that child within is still there, still wanting to start from scratch, still wanting to know why, and still wanting to make the world a better place and a place that makes more sense. Jesus tells us to welcome that child, and I hope we can do just that.
Dear family of faith, let us now lift our hearts and voices in prayer. In the silences, please voice aloud or hold your hearts, in your hearts, those prayers which you feel moved to offer. Thank you, God, for making yourself known to the peoples of earth. Thank you for all individuals and assemblies who gather to praise, worship, and pray to you. Thank you for the Anglican Communion, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Church of the Province of Uganda. Thank you for the Episcopal Church and our diocese, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, Holy Cross Church in Castro Valley, and St. Matthew's Church in San Mateo. Thank you for the faith communities in our region, especially Matthew, St. Matthew's Missionary Baptist Church in Livermore. We lift up to you the Universal Church. Thank you, God, for bending the moral arc of the universe towards peace and justice. We lift up to you the world and all its needs in places of war and conflict, especially Afghanistan and the southern borders of the United States. We ask that you would sow the seeds of peace and concord in places of natural disaster, especially Haiti and the East Coast. We ask that you would bring relief, comfort, hope, and wisdom to everyone and everything affected. We pray to you to preserve and prosper the world you have made. Thank you, God, for this faith community of St. Bartholomew's. We lift up to you our life together and all our members. This week, please pour a special blessing upon Sue, John, and Hiroko, and for Kip. Protect and comfort those in military service. Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, and Taylor. Please watch over our congregation and its people. Thank you, God, for inspiring many among us to care for others in body, mind, and spirit. We lift up to you all who minister to others in need, especially all nurses, doctors, police, firefighters, educators, and especially Brad O and Brad S. Give protection and encouragement to all who dedicate their lives to service. Thank you, God, for the healing mercies you pour upon those in need. We lift up to you all those who have requested prayers for health and wholeness, especially for Olivia, Becky, Bert and Judy, Brett M., Carol, Kathy, Dave and Mary, Doris, Dottie, Aaron, Esteban, Miroslava, and Tamara, for Glennis and James, for Geraldine, for Helen, for Umberto, Candida, and family, for Janice and Bravo, 
for Jim, Joanne, John and Hiroko, for Kip, for Lee, for Lisa B, for Laura, Luke, Marion, for Marge B, for Mary L, for Monty and Judy, for Nick, Nora, for Michael, Sandra, and Henrietta, for Michael E, for Michael R, for Steve W and children, for Tamara S, for the Purcell Ordstadt family, for Father Ron Culmer and family, for the Sherman family, for Robert, Reverend Jennifer Nelson and family, for the Christensen family, and for all the souls affected by wildfires and flooding throughout the world. We wish healing prayers for all of God's children who have gone missing. May you all be rescued and feel God's warm love for you. And now for a very happy birthday blessing to our sister Jen C. Jen H, I'm sorry. May your day be filled with love and peace. Please comfort and heal all who suffer and struggle. Thank you, God, that when this mortal body lies in death, you welcome your servants into your nearer presence. We lift up to you those who have died, especially Colin O, Corey C, Bernie S, the 13 U.S. heroes, Chalopi M, Clifford Willibus, and Chris C. Grant all the departed blessed rest and continual growth in your love. Thank you, God, for every good gift you give us. Thank you for those things that inspire joy and gratitude, especially the family we have at St. Bartholomew's. Please help us to be aware of the blessings of this life and to enjoy them with glad and grateful hearts. And now we gather our prayers into one in these words of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our complete supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. One brief word uh, before we move into our closing hymn and the end of our worship. First of all, I am aware that there may be those watching who are new and unknown to St. Bartholomew's. 
If that describes you, I would like to bid you the warmest of welcomes and thank you for tuning in to our online worship. My name is Andy. I'm the priest and pastor here at St. Bartholomew's, and I would sure love to get to know you better if you are in that category. Please use the contact information on our website to reach out by telephone or email, and I very much look forward to hearing from you. I'm also aware that there are those of you tuning in who, because of the isolation of these past 18 months, um, haven't been really connected with the church. Uh, this has been a time when communication is, for obvious reasons, so much more difficult. And I just really want to, A, thank you for continuing to faithfully be involved with this community through the online worship, and also simply invite some dialogue. 18 months is a long time. There may be things in sermons, in various other things that have happened in the life of the church that you wish to follow up on, things that you have questions and comments about. Um, I am really hoping that in these months to come, as hopefully communication begins to get easier and better, that we can have a tremendous amount of real, authentic, and deep dialogue, especially in really such a tumultuous and divisive time. So I just want to throw out an open invitation for that. And I hope that if you're watching and these words resonate with you, um, I will be trying to reach out to all the individuals in the parish over these months to come, but don't wait on me. Please feel free to take the initiative and reach out if you are desiring any sort of one-on-one -on -one conversation and follow up on anything that is going on in our life as a church. Thank you, God bless you, and we will now move into our closing
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.